Well, hey, it's Wes, and today we're going to be talking about the new ish Sokani X60 RGB. Let's get into it. So, what do we have here? The Sokani X60 RGB is very similar to the original X60 and X60 Mark II. It appears to be pretty much the same chassis, just with a few design upgrades and tweaks. It is not quite as small as the Godox ML60, but it offers you a little bit more versatility at a competing price point. Let's get into it, see what we have here, starting with, as always, the build quality. The build of the X60 is actually really nice. The metal chassis that surrounds the light is very, very thick metal much thicker than on the Godox ML60 and honestly any other value priced lights. On the front here we have a reasonably robust Bowens mount which is surprising for the size of this light. It comes with a stock diffuser or reflector depending on what you want to call it. And if we look on the bottom here we'll see that Sokani actually fixed one of the weaknesses of their previous lights, was kind of a flaky DC power jack. This one here is very solid metal inset, almost excessive. On the back here, we have what's a plastic handle, unfortunately, and the plastic screen. And this is where we get into our biggest problem. This screen is made out of the softest plastic you can imagine. It is not durable and it scratches very easily. Very squishy, so that's kind of a shame. It's protecting the glass LCD panel underneath, so I'm sure the panel will be fine, but this plastic screen is not fantastic. Now, I've actually been using this light for some time now, as I do with any of the lighting products that I test. There is a built-in fan, very hard to hear, and it keeps it very cool over long times. So, I have left this on for eight hours straight at maximum power, no issue at all there. One issue that I did have is this rosette locking arm here. The way this adjusts is through a rosette. It's not a continuous lock, but it does lock it down nice and hard. Unfortunately, all four screws in the rosette came loose. So I had to take that apart, tighten up those screws, put it back together. So that doesn't speak well. You know, all the components inside seem perfectly sturdy, but it uh, apparently those bolts need some Loctite or something. So be careful when you're using this and to make sure that, that thing doesn't come loose and fall off your light stand. So overall, we, it's kind of a confusing build quality. You have the ultimate tough chassis, but then some weak stuff around it. I'm going to give that a seven out of 10. Feature set. And this is actually where this cheap little light does very well. Compared to the compact Godox ML60, which gives you 60 watts of power, this one gives you almost 80 watts of power. It's uh, supposed to be 80, but I only tested it around 78 or 79, which is fine. It's close. But what differentiates it from the ML60 is that you're getting full RGB. In addition to that, you're getting Bluetooth app control over that full RGB. And not only in that, yes, you get all those scenes and effects, but you can enter a mode where you're individually controlling every single LED, essentially. You have red, green, blue. You have the warm and cool LEDs on the inside. So that's super convenient. You can have full control over this light. So I'm going to switch over here and show you something really interesting. These lights turn down so far that you can actually look at the LEDs while they're on. Let's get a closer look here. And here you can see that they're laid out in this unique concentric pattern to eliminate any shadow cracking. So you have the round center ring moving all the way into just the central LEDs. So the LEDs aren't broken up in any interesting way. They are all held together in concentric rings in a somewhat intelligent pattern. Let's get the app open and have a look there. Okay. So what I like about this app is it's very simple and it doesn't make me create an account or register or do anything like that. Just open it up and use it very, very easily. So there we are in the RGB CW mode and go to the HSI mode, set our intensity, 
choose our colors with the color wheel. You can enter it in manually. CCT mode, color temperature. It's just, you got magenta compensation. Just dead simple app. The effects clearly laid out. So I really like this app. There are sections of this app that aren't even in English, but I still prefer this app over honestly most Bluetooth control apps I have seen for devices like this. Why is that? Because they don't try to do more than they should. It is simple and easy and just lets you get right in, do what you need and put it away. Thank you Sakani for doing that and not overdoing that. This can also be controlled just by a regular remote control. It can also be powered by a battery sled. However, it doesn't come with either of those. The Godox ML60, however, does. And fun fact, you can use the battery sled from the ML60 to power the X60. So if you have both, you don't necessarily have to get a second sled. Now, if you want to power them both, yeah, you do. And honestly, for me, probably the biggest feature for this is that it has a Bowens mount in the front, so you can mount whatever modifier you want on it. Now, the problem with that is this is not a big light, not a lot of power, so if you put a decent-sized softbox on it, this is not going to give you the power that you need in most circumstances. But that's fine. You can attune for that. But overall, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10 for feature set. It has a lot of features, a lot of power, but we don't, all we're really lacking is full power, DMX control, and the extra accessories that it might come with. Light quality. So here we're looking at 78 watts of light and a CRI of around 96. That is solid. Now, if you shift your white balance further than is normal, you are going to end up with some, uh, some wonky CRI. So a color temperature will go all the way to 10,000K. 10,000K, you're not going to have 96 CRI. Likewise, if I go all the way down to 2800, won't be the same as well, because that's when it's kicking in the other colored LEDs to get that job done. The TLCI of this light is 95, and while that used to be about the highest that you could get, there are other lights out there that go as high as 98. So I can't give this a full 10 out of 10, it's a nine out of 10 for light quality. Usability. Again, we're winning in a lot of these categories here. We have a Bowens mount, super usable. You have a bright, easily readable screen. Like we are lit here. You can still see the screen very clearly on the back here. The uh, off-axis viewing is not great. You can still see it, but the, uh, the white text turns black. So it's not perfect, kind of a cheap panel, but it is well specced for what it does. It has enough dots to display the information that it needs effectively and is pretty bright. The biggest problem for me is this. While it is a reasonably small power brick, this cable is, I don't even think it's three feet long. So once you put this up on a light stand, this brick is very quickly going to be dangling and catching on things. This DC side is way too short. The one that comes with the ML60 is probably four times the length of this. It is much longer. And the jack is on the bottom here so that there's no vertical pressure on it. But then like it pulls out if you catch it on something. There is no particular place to put this wire. So I kind of just, you know, loop this around here to take the pressure off it. And then even once you've done that, the business end, the AC end of the power is, I don't know, maybe six feet long. So you don't have a lot of distance to play with, unfortunately. And that's the biggest problem for the usability for me, this really short, cheap power cable. So I'm gonna give that a nine out of 10. This is a dead simple, easy light to use, simple, easy app control. Overall great, but this power cord, not great. Value. And this is where Sakani usually takes the cake. Do they this time? Let's find out. So the X60 RGB, again, very easy to confuse this with the regular X60s because it's the same name just with some more letters packed onto the end of it. It's $200, I think. 
It hasn't fully hit market yet, so that might go up or down just a little bit. I'll add a correction underneath. Again, if you want to buy one of these, there'll be links below and the accurate price should be there. Then you have the ML60, $270. In some ways, this is looking like a terrible value all of a sudden. Doesn't do RGB, doesn't have app control, has a little less power, but you kind of know what to expect with this thing. Now, the closest thing I could find for a Bowens mountable RGB light is the Godox SZ150R. That's $560, but it's almost twice as much power. So that's okay, I guess. And then there is the GVM RGB. Again, similar idea, $470, a little bit cheaper. There's not a lot to compare this with. In the Bowens mount form factor, RGB is still kind of new because people are still figuring out how they want to do the chip distribution on the COB. And it's hard to do, it's hard to get it right. Godox puts a diffusion layer on top of that. So if you're putting it into a softbox, that diffusion layer doesn't matter anymore. I kind of wish it was removable on the Godox. I mean, you might be able to pop it off, but it's not specifically supposed to be removable. So overall, this is a fantastic value. $200 for this amount of light, this versatile of a light. That is great. Now it doesn't come with all the accessories at that price. So, and that's kind of where you're spending your extra money with the Godox ML60. It comes with the sled and a better bracket. So that's fine. But overall, I have to obviously give this a 10 out of 10 for value. There's nothing specifically competing with it right now. So overall, it gives us a score of 43 out of 50. Now that is a very high score for me. And I wanna add a bit of a caveat. I have to remind you that Sokani is a value brand and their aftermarket support is not going to be great and their products in the past, I haven't had this experience specifically myself, but some have said that they are not enormously reliable. Again, that has not been my experience, but people have said that. So I have to add that caveat. For $200, I mean, you shouldn't be surprised that this is something that is made as cost-effectively as possible. But I have to say, I am surprised at the amount of value that they're giving you here. The rigidity, the versatility, the app control, it's fantastic. So again, those are my thoughts. If you have any thoughts about this, let me know down in the comments below. But until next time, let's go take some photos.